Hello, I'm TJ and welcome to my channel. Today we are about to fix a broken switch on my Flysky FSI6 transmitter. I've dropped it in and broken this switch. It's really fragile and you shouldn't be dropping the transmitter in the first place. Let's start by just removing the batteries. This step is optional but it's always safe to remove batteries and does its power while handling electronics. I'll just leave it up to you. After removing the batteries, we just need to remove the back screws. We have four screws on the back plate and this is what it is between us and the inside of the transmitter. As we finish removing the screws, we need um, to remove the cover from the power switch. This is a bit tricky, I'm using just a guitar pick to make it easier. After removing the cover from the power switch, we just need to pry the transmitter open. You can use your fingers, but as it is a bit tricky, just use a guitar pick as a, um, as a tool to open it. The guitar pick is quite useful as it can really slide between the two parts without leaving any damage. As you do the last push to open up the transmitter, be really careful because you have two wires connected to the board, one for the COM port and one for the batteries. Here you can see the two connectors on the right, they are the ones that you need to remove. Be really gentle while removing the two connectors, as this will avoid doing any damage to the board. After removing the two connectors, just put the back plate away, as you don't need it right now. You can inspect the interior of your transmitter. Be careful while moving any flex cables or any wires around because you can damage your board irreparable. On the next step we will need to unscrew the switch from the front plate. Just remove the front nut holding the switch back on its place. We can now remove the switch from its place. As you can see we have two wires that we will need to unsolder. To remove the wires from the switch, we can just use a cheap soldering iron. After warming up the soldering iron, it should really be easy to unsolder the wires. Just be careful and don't burn yourself. I got the new switch, I bought a three position switch and as you can see it's identical to the original. I'll just leave you a link below on where you can get it from. Next we need to solder the wires into the new switch. It's always easier if you attach this switch to something, as it's soldering with just two hands it's really not easy. I used the cheap clip crocodile thingy, as you can see, and it's really helpful on while soldering wires. Just apply your solder first to the switch, next to the wires, and it should be a fairly simple process. Solder the wires into the switch, but just be careful, solder the wires into its correct place. Just go back into the video and see the correct position of the wires. It's always easier and prevents you from having a reversed switch on your transmitter. After soldering the wires, just put it back on its place. Just be careful once more so that you don't damage anything electronical inside the transmitter. It should go in really easily and then the only thing that you need to do is just screw the nut on the front. Now 
Before putting the back plate on its place, just make sure that everything is moving properly, as it will save you from having to open the transmitter again. Then you will have to connect the wires back into the board. There are two different connectors, so you won't miss them. They will slide really easily, so just don't push them too hard as you will damage the board. Start by assembling the case from the top. It's easier and it will prevent any damage. Now it's time to put the screws back. Let's put the batteries back and see if we've done a good job or if we were really, really terrible. Don't forget to put the cover on the switch. You can now turn it on and test all the switches to see if you've really done the good job. As you can hear from the beeping, I installed the switch upside down. Lesson learned, I guess.